die. Do die. Please die. Oh. Manjari? What? Manjari. Eat. Oh, no. old chap. How are you feeling? Hello, Jones. That hurricane has me down, I'm afraid. Hurricane nonsense. Just a little gale, that's all. Doesn't bother me a bit. It isn't only the weather. It's those people. Those terrible people next door. They're making my life unbearable. Ooh, the takers? Is that their name? Yes. Of all the Middle Western barbarians, Hello, honey. Oh, baby. Oh, there he goes again. Oh. How are you, Annie? Huh? How's he coming? Oh! Oh, go away! Go far away! Oh, oh I'm sorry, honey. Oh, be oh. careful! Oh, excuse me, baby. Don't call me baby. What's the matter, baby? Ain't you feeling good? Oh, now leave Olivia alone. Oh, my glory, I was only asking her how she felt. Can't I even ask her? Hey, where have you been all this time, anyway? Up looking the lady passengers over? Mama, what's the matter with you? Oh. Oh, Earl, I'm so sick. This business trip of yours will be the death of all of us. Hush, Mama. Don't talk about business. We don't want anybody to know about that. This is supposed to be a pleasure trip. Papa, will you please go out of here? Go wherever you want to, just so you go. Go and get seasick. Who, <laughs> me? <laughs> you gotta wish worse than that on me. I'm feeling great. I feel like a girl. <laughs> oh, for mercy's sake, let the child alone and stop speaking. next door. I'll go in there and see what he wants, and then I'm going to eat. Oh. Here, I'll take that seasick medicine in there. Maybe it'll help you. Certainly done wonders for you folks. Oh, please. Well, goodbye, little sunshine. The cheerfulness in this room is stifling. Oh, get out of the way. You're knocking on the wall, and I thought maybe you needed something. Anything I can do for you? No. I can get you a little uh, chicken broth if you like. No, no, no. You get over it. Say, there's a steward outside. Just give me a great cure for seasickness. Just sit under a tree. See? Just sit under a tree. Oh. Just give me some spaghetti. That's the only thing I can read. Si, senor. A side order of macaroni. Where's the captain? He is a little bit thick. Say, tell that orchestra they need to play for me.
She is beautiful, but unapproachable. No one's been able to meet her. To me, she's like a Grecian goddess, carved of stillness. Not bad. Save that line and use it in your next play. I shall. And speaking of plays, how's yours doing? The pastoral scene? It's a colossal success. Really? Surprising, isn't it? You know, when I wrote it, I never dreamed it would be popular. Proves that there's a sophisticated, intelligent public for the better type of thing. You'll probably sell it to the movies for a fortune. The movies? Please. Don't even mention the pastoral scene in the same breath with the movies. I despise them. They're the lowest form of art. They're the vilest thing that I... what we deserve. <laughs> it's your friend, the terrible Tinker. He's no friend of mine. I despise him and all his kind. Our most annoying native type. It's just such fellows as Tinker that make Europeans hate Americans. <laughs> hey, Charlie! Come over here, Charlie. Hey, where you been all the time? We've been waiting for you. Now we got a real court there. Yeah, here's our base. Sound your aid, Charlie. Oh, quit your kidding, Earl. <laughs> <laughs> there should be a public executioner on every liner. They probably saved up all their lives for this trip. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. Pardon me here. Wait a minute. Here, here, man. I want you to meet Charlie Turner of the Union Box and Paper Company of Cleveland. Charlie, I want you to meet the finest small body of men ever gathered together on one ocean. This is Ben Waxel of the Waxel Axel Work. Howdy. Glad to know you. And P.D. Weatherwright of the Weatherwright Worcester's Mill. Oh, hey, Mr. Turner. Fine. Uh, oh, pardon me. I, I didn't get your name. Aaron Fell. No, not the Aaron Fell of the Midwest Trust and Savings. <laughs> well, I'm glad to meet you. I owe you money. <laughs> I guess we all do. Aaron Fell. Well, well. Well, one of the biggest financiers in the Middle West. You know, I've seen your face so often that I feel I already know you. <laughs> An awful lot of people have seen my face and never met me. It's been in a lot of places. Say, is there anything to this talk about the straight back blade people buying you out? They tried. Is that new blade of theirs giving you much competition? Mm -hmm. A little. A little? Why, I heard in New York that the new straight back blade is outselling yours three to one. Say, listen, there's been five new blades come out in the last five years, but I'm still in the business. Well, Sprague told me that you and the new straight back were having the darndest fight he ever heard of. Said they were spending millions to beat you. Uh, it's a lot of hooey. Yeah? Imagine those little souls and their petty little affairs. I can imagine nothing of less consequence. Well, what gets me is why you're running away on a trip like this. Yeah, what's the idea? Just for pleasure. Aw, oh, don't give us that. In the middle of a big fight like this, you go away to have fun? Well, that's my story. Well, what's the lowdown? What's up your sleeve? Well, I'm through with business. This trip is strictly for pleasure. All right, bartender. Just well, have one. So long, boys. I'll see you all again, maybe? Sure. Yeah, surely. Well, good, good night, night Mr. Bell. Good, good night. night. Nice. <laughs> nice chap, that fellow. Oh, he's a great fellow, so. Hey, Earl. I missed you in New York. Did you have any fun? Oh, Sam. The last night I was there, well, I took the family to, to a show without music. A play. A play. Was it good? Good. Hey, some of the stuff they pulled in there would have made a mule blush. It wasn't bad, mind you. It was terrible. <laughs> <laughs> what was it, a comedy? Well, in the, in the end, the hero run off with his daughter-in-law, and then she took poison. Uh, so I guess it wasn't a comedy. Anyhow, the gallery left. <laughs> <laughs> what is the name of it? 
Some peculiar name, huh? Something like pasture or something. That's it. The pasturage scene. That's the name. Uh -huh. You want to waste an evening, don't miss it. <laughs> <laughs> a numbskull. <laughs> Boys, that ought to call for a little close harmony. Right, right on. Give it to them. Me, 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 me. Old Aunt Mariah sitting by the fire. She wants a drink of gin, so she knows it is. Did you see what I saw? A pippin. I guess she didn't like you boys singing. Here, chemist. Give the boys the hair on the dog that bit him. I'll be back in a minute. Thank heaven he's gone. I could wring his neck for what he said about your play. What can one expect? Look, this is right in line with what I was talking about. Tinker Blades hits new low today. I sold mine before I left, but don't tell Tinker that. Where did he ever think that? You've been here all the time? <laughs> I want you to meet my friend, Madam Amora. Madam Amora, here's the sickest kid you ever saw in your life last night. <laughs> His face was the color of pea soup. Well, I beg your pardon. I'm frightfully sorry. Oh, that's all right. I was so angry, I just couldn't see where I was going. Never in my life have I been so annoyed. Really? The most obnoxious, the most uncouth, the most unmannerly beast I've ever encountered has been irritating me all afternoon. Where is this terrible person? Right there at the bar with that gorgeous creature. <laughs> Do you know him? Lightly. He's my father. Hello, George. How are you? Now you take good care of us, and I'll take good care of you. Take the captain over a bottle of wine, will you? Take Ben Waxel over a bottle. Just take any of them over a bottle. Be sure and take good care of Mama here, because ever since she got me, she's been kind of particular. Oh, hush up, Earl. <laughs> hello, Ben. How's it going? Hi. Hi, Earl. Hi. Oh, hello, Ogle. How you come? Meet the family, will you? How do you do? Mr. Ogle and I have met. How you been, Ogle? Glad to see you out of bed and around again. Certainly glad to see you eating there, you know. That seasickness, that's just a lot of imagination. That's just... Condition of the mind, that's all that is. Oh, just bring us a lot of these uh, fancy names on here. Just something we ain't used to at home. <laughs> I'm not very hungry myself. I eat up all the potato chips and the cheese up there on that bar. If they don't move those things, why, they're going to spoil somebody's appetite some of these days. Now, please. You've driven Mr. Ogle away. Well, Mama, I didn't have anything to do with it. Well, where's she going? Mr. Ogle. Don't you think your rudeness was a little obvious? Even we crude Middle Westerners have feelings, you know. I really don't care to discuss it. But I do. What I really wanted to say was, why don't you ask the steward to change your table? I, for one, don't enjoy your company any more than you seem to enjoy ours. Well, really, I... And my father may seem loud and annoying to you, but to me, he's more of a man than any two New York intellectuals I've ever met.
We've got Tinker with his back to the wall. He'll have to sell his company to us and sell cheap. Does Mr. Tinker know that you are behind the Playback Razor Company? I don't think so. But even if he doesn't, he's too smart to tell his business secrets to me. And so you want me to find them out for you? We'll pay you well if you do. I know that Tinker has got some good reason for taking this trip. He told me he was traveling for pleasure. Hmm. Behind Tinker's pleasure, there is always business. He makes a joke of everything. But while he makes jokes, he also makes money. Mm -hmm. Don't worry. I know this type of man. He may be shrewd, but his shrewdness leaves him when he has to deal with a woman. Madam, Madam Memora, this is uh, my wife, Mrs. Tinker. How do you do? Oh, well, Mama, uh, Madam Memora is a, an old friend of of Ben Waxter. I'm delighted, Madam Tinker. Maybe we uh, play bridge or together sometime, perhaps? Oh, why, yes, I, I'd love to. Madam Memora, this is my daughter. Olivia. How do you do? Charmed, I'm sure. Good evening. Goodbye. <laughs> yes, uh, she's an old friend of Ben's. <laughs> I just happened to run into him up there last night. She's a very beautiful woman, don't you think? Oh, yes. Yes, indeed. <laughs> yeah, yes. <laughs> yes, she's pretty. Oh. Finally got back, did you, Miss Cousy? I thought maybe you dived overboard to get that fish. Say, do you shave yourself? I don't got this good. Savvy, shavy, huh? No. Oh, you're a straight razor man, huh? Si, senor. Oh, Lord, that's old time stuff. Here, try those. See that? See that picture? Here, wait a minute. Take the whole works. See that? Grazie yeah. tanto, signore. Grazie tanto. Shave all the other boys, too. Papa, will you please stop making Mother and me ridiculous? I wasn't doing anything, only just a little advertising. Well, that's America. You know, we get out and hustle. We advertise. We've always got our mind on our business. And, and, and waiters, they have just as many whiskers as anybody. Oh, Earl, you act the fool no matter where you are. I'm getting sick and tired of it. Come on, Mama. We'll have dinner in our state. Baby, don't do that. Mama, you go. I was just joking, don't you? Ben looks like I sleep in the doghouse tonight. Well, you should, with your nerve, introducing her as a friend of mine. <laughs> well, you wanted her as a friend, didn't you? I just fixed it for you. Ah. Uh... I wouldn't trust your father with that woman for one moment. She looks like a schemer to me. Oh, I wouldn't worry too much about father. Come on. Monsieur Tinker. Oh, hello, madam. <laughs> Hi. Say, you, you haven't seen anything of the squaw around here, have you? The what? The wife. Oh, yes, I have. And she was angry. <gasps> yeah? <laughs> Say, old sitting bull, you get the devil if she catches him here. Willie, I am so sorry. But I understand. You know, I believe you do. Ever since the first time I saw you, I just says to myself, there's a woman that really understands. But of course. Look at your hand. <laughs> oh, my hand ain't much. I don't, I don't go in for manicures much, you know. But I'm going to get one as soon as Al Smith selects it. Uh, uh. Oh, that's the hand of a conqueror. Yeah. Say, you, you, you want those fortune tellers? No, not that. But I am what they call psychic. Psychic? <laughs> Come over here. I want to talk to you. What? <laughs> You know, I'm, 
I'm certainly interested in this. See what else you can see in there outside of a lot of native soil. I am glad you believe. Because if you believe, I can tell you many things. You can? You mean you can tell you mean you could tell me about a business deal? Certainly. How? I have a crystal ball. In it, I see the future. Well, when can you look in this ball? Now, if you want it. I'm certainly anxious to find out something. Pardon me, sir, but the dining room is soon to close if you wish dinner. That's right. Thanks. Wait. Didn't you want me to read the future? Yes, but I'm hungry. When, when shall we meet? I'll go out and take a little walk. A walk? At this hour? Who are you going to walk with? Well, nobody, Mama. I just need a little fresh air. Air? <laughs> I guess so. I, I, I need air. I really do need air, Mama. Mama, for pity's sake, give him air. <laughs> I'm sure I don't care in the least what he does. Not a girl, Mama. Goodbye, kid. I'll be home early. We'll see that you are. I'll still be home early. Now, what do you suppose he's going to do? Jump overboard? Good night. Good night, honey. You know, Olivia, he's up to something. Oh, Mother, he doesn't mean any harm. I know. But you can't tell what kind of people he may fall in with. I'm worried. I'm worried, too. But not for him. I'm worried for the people he may fall in with. Well, I think you'd better go and see that he doesn't get into any mischief. Oh, all right, Mother. Oh, hello, Olga. Hello. Glad to see you. Uh, beautiful night, isn't it? I just take a little stroll for myself. You're not looking for Madame Memorial by any chance. Me? <laughs> no, no. I, I'm a married man. What did I want to see her for? Uh, you're not looking for, are you? Well, well, yes. Oh, well, come on, we'll stroll up this way. I'll help you look for her. Hello, baby. Looking for me? Well, not exactly, but... Well, I'll tell you what you do. You take a walk with Mr. Ogle. I got to see a man about something. You don't have to walk with me. I know it. you'd stop annoying me. If I could annoy you twice as much, we still wouldn't be even. I have waited for you. I was delayed, making my wife think this is business. With you, it is always business, huh? <laughs> Carrying glasses at night. That is funny. 
You know what that is? <laughs> it's an American emergency kit. <laughs> you don't need that here. You didn't forget the crystal ball, did you? No, I did not. Say, do you, do you see anything in there about Mama's appendix? It's been bothering her lately, and I certainly hope she don't have to have an operation. I see you, your face, and your name, all over the world, in strange countries. Say, you, you'll see my face in every country where men shave. But wait, what's this? Another name appears next to yours. I see a line, a straight line. And it, the name ain't straight back, is it? The name is straight back. That's right. Do you, do you see me going to Damascus? I see you right in Damascus. That's right. Do I get the steel? Wait! You go to Damascus to buy steel. Gee, lady, you're wonderful. What's the matter? My friend, you must be very, very careful. I see much danger. I'm afraid for you. Lady, you've got me so. Oh, I'm so glad. You know, I figured that everybody knows that Damascus steel is the world's finest. So it's my idea to corner the supply and buy the process. Tinkers, tempered blades made from Damascus steel, the world's finest. See? Hmm. And that'll put the straight back people out of competition. That is truly a wonderful idea. You are a genius. Say, listen, madam, don't you ever breathe a word of this to a soul, understand? Surely you trust me. I guess I'll have to. I, I don't know why I've talked to you the way I have. I don't know, there's just something about you that uh, makes me get confidential. I like you, too. And I would do anything for you. Really, anything. That's awful nice of you. And I certainly appreciate it. But, well, uh, I guess I'll say good night. Good night, my friend. Oh, say, look in that ball and... See if you can see whether Mom will be sore about me being out this late. A woman only knows what a man tells her. And if you tell her nothing, she will know nothing. Say, so don't you worry about me. I don't tell any woman anything. Good night. Good night. I wasn't going to be able to wake you up. How you feeling, honey? Never mind how I feel. Where have you been? I haven't been anywhere. I haven't even been off the boat. I've just been sitting around quietly, enjoying myself. Sitting around quietly, he? Who is? Oh, honey, don't start that, my goodness. Now, don't you honey me. You've either been around with some woman, or you've been playing poker again. Ain't no use trying to fool you, honey. You certainly are psychic. <laughs> That's exactly what I've been doing, playing poker. <laughs> and a one, too. Look at that. <laughs> you can have it all, and you can take it home and give it to that day nursery of yours. Well, 
I suppose if you must gamble, it's better that the money be used to do some good with. Well, <laughs> certainly did all right tonight. Poker, too? Must have been in here all night. Get out of here. Darn little flea hound. I told you that a woman would have no trouble finding out his secrets. You keep in close touch with him. And if there are any new developments, cable my New York office. into the future. Your future. Oh, do you, do you go in for that fortune-telling stuff yourself? Oh, but yes. Compared to him, I'm a mere child in knowledge. He is perhaps the greatest psychic in the world. Oh, I see. Oh, he tells you what to do, and then you tell me. I see. Well, here. Let me pay the freight. Why, how strange! There's father. Where? Where's your father? Where do you see him? Oh, nowhere, Mother. I was mistaken. Look over there at the sun on those windows. Isn't it lovely? Why, it is your father. Ready for a little adventure? If you're sure that everything will be all right. You can trust me. Right. From Monsieur Tinker. Here, Olivia. You read it. I read it. Dear Hun, I'll be in early. But some parties I got acquainted with in the hotel want me to go out with them in quite a hurry. We're going out for 
couscous. What? That's what it says, Mother. Couscous. Couscous? And with that woman? Oh! Oh, oh now, Mother. It'll be all right. Couscous? Oh, Mr. Ogle. I want you to do me a favor. Of course. What is it? Find my father and tell him not to deny being on the street with Madame Mamoro today. Remember when we saw them from the roof? Mother's all upset about it. Oh, she is. Awfully. And now, good night, my friend. Good night, madam. And thank you very much for the couscous. The cable blink, please. Hello, baby. Hello, Ogle. <laughs> See, I've been having a great time. Did you ever hear about this Arabian couscous? Oh, Papa, go away from here. Go quickly. What's the matter? What's the idea? Take him out in the street and tell him. What? Hurry, come on, Papa. Mm -hmm. Hello, Mama. <laughs> you, uh, you got my note all right, didn't you, hon? I did indeed. Indeed I did. <laughs> well, that's, uh, that's all right. That, that's fine. How is it? Indeed. You know, I'd heard so much about this uh, Arab couscous that uh, I decided to try it. I see. Well, are you coming over to our rooms now? Now? Uh, no, not now. I, I thought I'd stay down here a while with, with uh, Mr. Ogle. I tell you what, you run upstairs and go to bed, and I'll stay down here and uh, I'll smoke a cigar. <laughs> Kindly keep your hand to yourself. What makes you so interested in patting people's shoulders? What's the matter with you, Mom? Well, my goodness, what's disturbed you so? Just because I happen to go out looking for some Arabian couscous? Oh, I... Well, I think I'll say good night. Wait a minute, Ogle. Uh, going out for a little walk? I believe I'll go with you. I believe you'll not. Walk's off. Who were you out with this afternoon? <laughs> just, uh, just some gentlemen. What were their names? Well, uh, well, you wouldn't know, Mama, if I told you. There was, uh, there was just two of them besides, uh, besides us. Us? Us? Who do you mean by us? Oh, just, just us, just, just, just plain us, just, oh, oh, uh, Mr. Ogle and I, that, that's who I meant by us, that's, uh, simple, ain't it, Mama? Indeed it is. You're simple enough. You mean to stand there and tell me that it was Mr. Ogle you were out with all day? I suppose it was Mr. Ogle you spent your time with on the boat. I suppose it was Mr. Ogle who patted your shoulder on a public street this afternoon. I suppose it was Mr. Ogle you... you went with for ghost ghosts. Oh, you... you're just too impossible. I don't want to oh, Mama, see you again. Now, now, you're worrying oh, again about... Oh, don't speak to me. You don't. Want to do that for I'm going straight home. Don't you, you just... Oh, I think you'd better go, Mr. Ogle. You're worrying Please. all day long and you've got to yell at me with that woman. Mama, yeah, I've been worrying about you all day long. Oh. <laughs> Get her upstairs, Father. You go that way and no one will see you. Mama, come on Oh, no, I don't want to go upstairs. Take your hands off me. Mama, no, send me the cable, please, and right away. Oui, madame. Uh... <laughs> What's happening here? What's happening here? Oh, don't make me oh, see in the hotel. Oh, 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 Mama, you'll wake oh, the people up in the lobby. Oh, 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 please, ladies and gentlemen, everything is all right. Please do not worry. Everything is all right. Everything is all right, ladies and gentlemen.
baby. You run in there and take care of Mama. See there? There's a house detective. Maybe the chief of police. Oh, hello, Ogle. Come in. What's on your mind? I found out something I think you should know. What's that? I accidentally saw a cable Madame Amora was sending to New York. Madame Amora? Yes, it said she was delaying you here until she received further instructions. Are you sure? Absolutely. Delaying me? What do you know about that? Well, thanks, Ogle. Thanks very much. What a fine old fool I've been. I might have known a beautiful woman like that wouldn't be wasting her time on an old bird like me. I wonder what her game is, anyhow. Ogle, that madam, she's too shifty for me. But I'm gonna have one more round with her. Lady, lady, I see it on the inside, on the crystal ball, I see it a letter. It is the letter M. Money? No money. It is a name. It is the name Mam Mamora. Master! Our... It is money you want, mine daughter? Yes, yes, master. You know, that seems to be a universal complaint nowadays. Huh? Oh, I see it, you, on boats. You cross the oceans many times. You meet it, a rich man. He is a very fine man. That's right. You are together. You keep your eye on him very well. Does he suspect? The crystal clouds over. I cannot see very clearly. There is bad mental vibration. You are not being frank with me, my daughter. Speak freely. Tell me your desires. It is only through knowing what you want that I can look in the crystal and tell you the answer. I wish to delay this man from going on his business trip to the desert. You are being Paid for this? But yes. Ah, the whole thing is clearing up. It's been a little cloudy up to now. I see you employed by Americans. Yes, I am. I see you going straight back to America. Straight back? To America. Straight back. That's it. That's the name. Straight back. <laughs> 
Of course. They are my employers. Ah, now I see. Now I see. Very good. You cannot hinder this man. He is a conqueror. Nothing can stop him. The crystal ball never lies. He will win. He shall not win. I will stop him. His wife is very jealous. I will go to her and tell her that he's to meet me in the desert. Now listen, sister, you're going to go and spoil everything. What? Hey, I have spoken. And under no conditions are you to go and see his wife. Master, you're a great man and a great mystic. But you must not forget a woman's wits are her weapons. You're just half right. My fee is one hundred dollars. Welcome home. <laughs> Rompers ain't got no pockets in them. My hat, man. Hey, my hat, man. Hey, come here. You got a customer. Where are you? Come here. Your name, my daughter, is Janie Wilson. You was born in LaPorte, Indiana. You was not always a blonde, and you have come to see about your husband. Oh, how did you know? Oh, that is easy. The crystal never was as clear. Am, am I going to leave him? No, he's going to leave you. Oh, he is. But only for a little business trip. I see in the crystal a dark woman, a regular vampire. Oy, what a big liar she is. <laughs> I knew that. She will come to you with a story that your husband is going to meet her on the desert. Don't you believe one word she says? Hmm. I'll tell her a few things. You tell her, sister. You tell her. And you are the one that can tell her, too. She is trying to interfere with your husband's business. And, and he doesn't care for her at all? No. Why should he care for her when he has a beautiful lady like you? Then my husband is really good. Good? Lady, he's the best man I ever saw in that crystal. What you should do, lady, is give him a little more freedom, a little more rope, trust him. Let him have a little fun once in a while. Oh, I will, I will. No, I can't take it, lady. This one was too easy. It's on the house. Well, thank you. 
Good day. Good. That is all. Mr. Tinker! Mr. Tinker! Well, hey, that's here. 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 Here's some extra dough, oh. boy. Oh, that's you, Mr. Old, Tinker. Old Tinker's a fortune teller, isn't he? Oh, oh. oh up, get this kimono off of you. Sure had that last one fool, <laughs> didn't we? <laughs> yes. Hey, hey, you got a great racket. I'm going to join you. That's great. That beats my grass. <laughs> Where up here? Yes, sir, old Mahatma. We fixed everything up. Everything's going to be great now. Certainly put that over. Mr. Thinker. That's me. There are gentlemen waiting to see you. Fine, I was looking for him. Oh, hello. True? Because uh, if you ain't, why, don't let me stop you. Oh, you're Ali Ben Yusuf, ain't you? Nay, the illustrious Ali Ben Yusuf appointed the noble hands. Son of Inshallah to make that dealings with thee. Oh, I see. Y then you the noble hands. Nay, the noble hands appointed me to confer with thee. Well, nay, and who are you? Say, listen, there's too many middlemen horning into this deal already. Is it true that you desire to buy the glorious secret for making Damascus steel from the illustrious Ali Ben Yusha? Sure, it's true. Did the noble Hodge tell you what the illustrious ally wanted for this glorious secret? A mere nothing. A miserable 10% royalty on each packet of thy celebrated razor blade, payable semi-annually with a paltry interest of 7%. Nay, your glorious interest is too high. And so is your delicious royalty. All I'll pay is inconspicuous, 5%. A bargain you get me 10%, Mr. Tinker, I swear to you, if I take a penny less, I don't make a thing for myself. As I feel muzzles on your hobby, you're so good to me. What? Well, that's neat. <laughs> you're an Arab, huh? Well, I'm a Chinaman. See, what's your illustrious name? My name is Abraham, of the house of Levi, of the city of Jerusalem. Oh, Abi, and you're an agent. Well, all you're going to get is 5% or nothing, Abe. What is the size of thy noble output? Say, listen, we throw away enough razor blades in one year to make a pile higher than your pyramid. Thy speaker's thumb up. Here is the contract. Say, I, I can't read music. Thou signest, on the dotted line. So, so wait a minute here. We'll get this thing translated, and I'll come out to the alley's camp on the desert, and we'll finish up this business out there. And when will thy come to the camp of Ali Ben Yusha? Well, I'll leave this afternoon. This ain't good, Gilead. All right. Please, I want the car. And a driver who knows his way across the desert. When do you use this car? At once. Hello, Noble. How are you? Akdar Temple, Tulsi, Oklahoma. 28 miles from Claremore. Honey. Baby. Hello, hon. Hello, baby. How's every little thing? Your bags are packed. 
I see, hon, but gee, I don't need all those bags just for a little trip out to the desert. Trip to the desert? How dare you stand there and lie to me like that? I know all about your trip and the lady you're going to meet. A lady? Well, I don't know anything about any lady. Who's been telling you all these lies? You, Earl Tinker. You, that's who. Thought you had it all fixed for yourself, didn't you? Thought you could fool me by hiding behind a lot of false whiskers. But I knew you all the time. Now you can go to the desert or anywhere you please. Olivia and I are going home. I'm through with you. Well, baby, huh? I never did hear Mama talk like that before. Oh, Dad, you're like a pair of children. You go on your trip. It'll be better that way. Well, you believe in me, don't you? Oh, of course I do, Dad. All right, I'll go. Here I am fighting to save my business, and my own family is trying to hinder me. I've been a good husband for all these years. And what do I get for it? Nothing but suspicion. I'll go. Maybe I'll be kidnapped. Maybe I'll be killed. But I'll go. And if I never come back, baby, I want you to tell Mama that I loved her and nobody else. to see you. I have just come from the consulate and have the most distressing news for you. I've got the most distressing news for you, too. I've just come from Mama, and I'm on the way to the desert. No, 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 no. You must not go. That's what I've come to tell you. Yes, you've come to tell me to wait here till you hear from the straight back people. So you found out. <laughs> I looked in the crystal ball, and I found out everything. How'd you like me in the whiskers? <laughs> you? Yes, me. The old Hindu mystic. Laugh that off, will you? No, you must listen to me. You must. If you go, you will be killed. The two types with whom you must do business have started a war. You cannot do business with them now. Oh, please. If they capture you, they surely will kill you. Bunk. Even if you was telling the truth, I wouldn't believe you. There's one thing you forget, and that is that I'm a businessman. And a businessman don't let anything stop him. Well, I've warned you, so I don't have to feel sorry for you. But you will not be coming back from the desert, Mr. Tinker. So, goodbye. Oh, yes, I will. I'll come back. The Tinkers are like whiskers. They always come back. Oh. Goodbye, Cleopatra. <laughs> I inquired of your driver, madame. Well? He knows the shortcut to Ali Ben Yosef camp. Perfect. Nadia, hurry. Is that all, madame? Yes, thank you. One moment. What is in the car? You take the noise machine to the desert? I think it may come in very useful. Yes, madame. the voice of the Muezzin, praying from the minaret of El Basi. It is true, I. Well do I know the voice of the Muezzin. Do not I tell you that this daughter of the Franks was a seeress? Do I not tell you that with her magic she could bring voices and music from the air as she wills? What brings thee to my encampment? 
I come with a message that I've seen written across the Seine. What is the message? A man has come from far across the seas to have dealings with you. It is true. Peace. And dost thou know his name? The name of this man is Tinker. Yes. He will come to you with an offer of much gold. But his words are lies. He would steal from you a mighty secret. Where is my emissary, Abraham? He has gone to Al Basi to have the secret of the steel written in the language of Tinker. Order my camel. This writing must not be made. Tell the guard to keep a watch for this man, Tinker, and hold him here. I will deal with him tomorrow, when I return. I thought it was somebody shooting at us. Guess I was wrong. Chief. Then what happened? Same what they do the all foreigners. <laughs> Maybe I shouldn't have asked. Why, Miss Tinker? Come in, won't you? Mr. Ogle, I know you're going away, and I simply hate to bother you, but I must ask you to help me. Of course. What is it? I'm afraid my father's in serious trouble this time, and I'm trying to keep Mother from finding out just how serious it really is. Why, well, what's happened? Well, we haven't heard from him since he left yesterday on a business trip to the desert. Now, he may be all right, and he may not, but I must find him, or Mother will go stark staring mad. That's why I'm worried. Now, don't worry. We'll do something. I'd do anything in the world for you. You know that. You're being awfully nice. Oh, I'm sorry. I'll have to catch you later. Excuse me, will you? Oh, boy! Read this to me, will you? Read it. 
have sold film rights, your play, to high art films for 10000 But they insist on making radical changes. Check follows. Empire Productions. It's true. Hooray! I'm not broke now. Oh, lady. God bless the movies. America's greatest institution. I'm so happy for you. But what about Father? Oh, I'm sorry. I forgot about him. Wait a minute. I've got an idea. I know who'll get us to him. Come on, come on. 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 Last night, a sandstorm took place on the desert in the neighborhood of El Basi. Why, it's true. I awoke last night, and the sand was beating against my tent. The magic box speaks only the truth, always. Memora. She's the one got us into this thing. Since you like the magic box so well, you shall have it as a gift. You give it to me? only one little thing in return. That you shall help me with your master in the matter of the Damascus seal. You wish to buy it? Well, not for myself, but for the mighty company of the straight-back razor, who will deal with him honorably. We will talk of this with the illustrious ally Ben Yusuf after he has settled with the man Tinker. What will they do with uh, Tinker? <laughs> Sounds worse when he doesn't, did when you did it. Shufu, Shufu. get here. Oh, Earl, I'm so glad you're safe, that you're all right. <laughs> I'm all right. Oh, oh everything's going to be Earl. fine. One of the men just told me. It won't be long now. Oh, Earl, I can stand anything as long as we're together. That a baby. <laughs> oh, it's all right. You had a long trip. Go on, you take care of her, honey. Come on. Sit down, Sit down and rest. Now, you'll be all right. <laughs> Hello, Ogle. Hello, Mr. Tinker. Looks like we're in a pretty tough jam here. Is it that serious? Well, anything can happen. I'm pretty badly worried, especially about these women. Well, if anyone touches Olivia, I'll kill him. What's this? You and Olivia? Yes, sir. Well, we'll talk about that by and by. If there is any by and by. Inform him then of his fate. Oh, Mama, we can't help it now. Come on, bear up. I come to announce the sentence imposed upon thee by the illustrious ally Ben Yusuf. Tomorrow morning, soon after the hour of sunrise. Oh, I know.
Fogel. What are you doing here? Well, I came out to see if I could get away in the plane and bring back a rescue party. They've taken the stick out. Well, maybe we can get away without a rescue party. How? Oh. Say, have they got one of those gags in there, that microphone thing where the pilot can talk to the navigator? Sure they have. Duck in there and get it. All right. Art thou prepared for the execution of this infidel tinker? Summon the executioner. And now bring Tinker forth. He may never learn how our Damascus steel is made, but he shall soon find out how it feels. Just a moment, folks. Don't go away. We will put you on to a transcontinental hookup where you will get all the news from all over the world. Wait. Stay a moment while the magic box speaks. Moscow, Russia. The Soviet Union. In order to make the five-year plan an assured success, has extended it to 10, Washington, D.C. See what can happen there. The Washington, D.C., the United States government is making every effort to get the congressmen and senators off the dole. New York City, Wall Street prices have raised on assurance of big margins. The latest of these was completed yesterday when the Tinker Razor Blade Company bought out the Straight Back Company. When the company of Tinker has bought out the company of Straight Back. It is understood that the price paid is $30 million. $30 million? You heard me, $30 million. It must be true. The magic box cannot lie. And this makes Earl Tinker the biggest razor man in the world. That woman has lied to us. Seize her and hold her here. Boy, I'm certainly glad that thing's over. Bring Tinker here. Uh, nay, wait. We must treat him with the deference due a man of great importance. I will go to him. Let me look important here. Get up, Mama. When a man's important here, the wives must stand up. Oh, hello, Allie. I had no idea you were in the country. Greetings to thee, illustrious maker of many blades. Come right on in. Pull up a couch. Sit down. I fear my servants have made a mistake for which I crave thy illustrious pardon. But now we are as brothers. Let us now sign the writing that will give thee the secret of the Damascus steel. <clears throat> I don't even know that I want it now. What? Well, I've been thinking it over now that I control the razor business, why well, I think Tinker's blade's good enough. Then thou wilt not buy at any price. Oh, I didn't say not at any price. What'll you take? We will talk it over. But first, let us go into my tent, and thou will share with me my couscous. Couscous? You will not? Your wallet. Then shall we have our repast here. What's that? Well, that's couscous. That's Arabian beef stew. Couscous beef stew? Oh, Earl. No, <laughs> Mama. How could you? <laughs> Allie, I want you to meet the wife. She's a great little woman when she's in a good humor. 